pulled this out from deep into the tree itself, into the dist into the gap between the uh, dead wood and the, the, the live outer wood. Hi, I'm Bill Butler. This is a tree that I have not shown you before. This is the only tree I've ever collected in the swamps that had knees already attached. I have developed this for a few years. I have some video of collecting as well as development. We'll go ahead and take a look at that now. Hey, it's Bill Butler again. I'm out in the swamps again. Another fine February day in the New Orleans area. Going in, I'm going to find uh, something to dig up today and hopefully make a nice bonsai out of it. Now, fascinating feature about this tree, this is his knee. This is what sells this tree. This tree is coming up. Layers on one side, over here, comes out a couple inches. Doesn't feel like he's got a lot of hollow roots underneath. All the roots seem to be staying on the trunk. Front, he flares out over there as well. This, this is going to make an excellent tree. All right, I'm not winching this one. The tree's kind of small. The one that I just did could have been done without winching, but um, I'm glad I used it. And uh, this one's just going to be the traditional push-pull method. Come in, add a bevel. This knee needs all the respect I can give it. Whenever he's feeding this knee, I need to keep feeding. I won't be pushing in the direction of the knee. I don't want to risk breaking that off. These roots can break off. So I'll be pulling away from the knee and at 90 degree angles to the knee. Not towards the knee at all if I can avoid that. I should be able to avoid it. Could not have been simpler. Oh yeah. This can be done very nicely. Very nicely. Good tree. Let's clean it up. Make this cut. What's going on under here? This tree is hollow. There's the reason for this tree coming up so easy. It's actually hollow. This tree's got some story to it. Something has happened. This tree serious story to it. There's no carving involved. There's hollowing. This tree's hollow at the bottom. It's already carved. Oh my. Oh my. You come out here enough years, you'll eventually find a tree that you want. A tree of your dreams. A tree that makes you say, I'm so glad I'm doing bonsai out of this one. Something happened to this tree, not uh, you know in in its past. The tree is hollow down here, right in here. I could put my hand up into the tree. The previous tree that I worked on had a large flat root here. This one, the roots are all off to the side. Here's some close up of the dead areas of the tree. I'm off to the side of the tree here, as you can see, all inside of here. This is, this is dead wood. Here's the back, dead wood. 
down there. This is live tissue as it curves here. Okay, here's a close-up view of the hollow of the tree. Here being the front and the back here. And then off to the side, that'll be exposed as I uh, dig out and uh, possibly carve out some of uh, this material. So let's get started on the uh, cleaning. Just combing through to see how much of this material actually belongs to this tree. I can see that it's not bald cypress root. So let's get this out of there. See, heavier here, thinner here. This was not part of the tree. Look at this. I pulled this out from deep into the tree itself, into the, just into the gap between the uh, dead wood and the, the, the live outer wood. So whatever was growing next to the tree is, is just decided he wanted to grow up into the tree. That's just rude. I'm comfortable with the soil line being just below this knee here. So having picked that line, I'm going to trim off some of the fine hair roots, checking to make sure that first of all, that there are roots below it. And then again, here matches over here. So the soil line being there. This could be an interesting little flare eventually. This guy as well. Leave those guys alone. What to do with all this dead wood inside of here? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it either stay or rot away. I took out whatever felt really punky to my fingers. Once it's removed, the story is done. I can't, I can't retell that story. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. See what I end up with. Maybe blanch it out and uh, treat it and harden it off at a later date. Okay, so once again, I'm dealing with a tree that's got branches already on it. I want to remove those. Otherwise, the tree will dedicate, dedicate all of its energy in the next year to trying to rehabilitate those branches instead of putting out new growth everywhere else. You'll end up with a weaker tree. You won't end up with a better looking tree. You want this tree to forget growing where it has been growing and start growing in new locations. With the knee, if we have a short tree, the knee is unbelievable at this height. We can have the knee in the scene, but we want the knee to look relatively in scale. I've got two knees here. This is going to have to be a very tall tree compared to its base. This is going to be a flat top. I don't see this as being a tree uh, with a youthful conical shape, irregular triangle, have the knee over here, have a first branch over here maybe. No. This is an old bald cypress that I'm going after here. This tree is going to be four feet tall when it's done. When it's fully done, this tree is going to be a flat top somewhere up here. To do that, we will have to develop some taper somewhere high up and then taper out. Here's what I've chosen as the front. This feature here in the front, going a little bit off center. The roots in the back here, a little further back than this. If I had turned it just a little more, I'd have this feature, oh, if I turned it that way, I'd have this feature pointed straight at the viewer. Not attractive, it creates a symmetry in the tree, which is, this tree does not have symmetry. 
but it still creates a dividing line and you have the left tree and the right tree. Let's get that off center. Even at this though, what I have is the line of the knees and the line of this root here being a back plane to the tree. Even that I, I don't care for. I want to create just a little more of a turn to the tree so that this feature and the knee are at different depths to the viewer. So that the viewer is not viewing a tree that is resting against some imaginary back wall. There, the tree is just off center. Again, we don't create a left pot, right pot when we put the tree. If the tree's in a dead center, it creates that. This is the center of the pot. So I'm um, short distance, further distance for the center of the knee, center of the tree. So I'm dealing with 75% soil conditioner, 25% hadeite. This has got all the fines in it, all the nasty stuff that clogs potholes. It doesn't matter. There's no drainage in this pot. This pot and the pot before it are going to be filled up with water. They're going to be treated with uh, Row uh, Quick Start or Quick Transplant. It's a transplanting aid. Filling this pot took about, about six gallons of soil. Now, I want this higher. I want to see these features early on. Now having lifted it, what did I do to the placement of the tree in the pot. I saw a tree recently, took a photograph of it, had an interesting deadwood feature. Deadwood came all the way down, all the way down to there. Just opened up at the bottom. But this tree is not that tree. Who knows? There are no roots in the front, but with this feature here, it's also attractive. Got this gorgeous knee. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to put these in a sunny location. Uh, I'm going to fill them up with water and keep them full of water every time I come out here and water my plants. So look for these trees to show up again uh, next year uh, in 2015. I'll have another video posted. Subscribe to my channel. I'm sure I'm going to be putting up something else soon. I just got to get around to doing it. Thank you for watching.